If you're a hot pepper lover like me, you're probably not satisfied with the standard jalapenos and serranos you can get at the grocery store. Now, international stores sometimes have a little bit of a better variety, but really the best way to get rarer and more obscure peppers is to grow them yourself at home. I'm going to tell you about 10 different peppers that I'm growing this year in my garden. This year I'm growing six different hot peppers, two bell peppers, plus two peppers that are a little bit sweet and a little bit hot. But before we get too far, this channel is brand new, so be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you're the first to know when new videos drop. Now I'm going to save the best for last, so these first few peppers aren't the most exciting out there, but they are staples in my kitchen. So first up I have cayenne peppers. Now these seeds were actually a scam. My friend bought me penis peppers, which literally are supposed to look like penises. And I was majorly disappointed when they started growing and I realized they're actually cayenne peppers. Now cayenne peppers run from about 30,000 to 50,000 Scoville heat units or SHU. So that's significantly hotter than say a jalapeno, but it's nowhere near as hot as even a habanero. Now with cayenne peppers, it's super common to dry and crush them in what we know as crushed red peppers, which you might put on pizza or pasta. You can also powder them into a chili powder to use in chilies, stews, and sauces. And I actually just chop them up and put them in curries or with eggs. Next we have serranos, which I have from Botanical Interests. Serranos aren't all that interesting, but again, they're one of the ones that I actually like to use at home more than others. They're usually super easy to find at the grocery store and they're very common in Mexican cuisine. I like to use serranos in things like homemade salsas and curry. They tend to range from around 10,000 to 25,000 Scoville units. So again, they're hotter than jalapenos, but in the grand scheme of things, they're not all that spicy. Next up, we have the puma pepper, which I also grew for the first time last year. So puma peppers start out a super dark purple, and then they mature into like oranges and yellows. They're often grown ornamentally or for decoration because they turn into this huge purple bush that has bright and colorful fruit as they mature at different different times. Puma peppers tend to range from 300,000 to 400,000 Scoville units, so they're generally a little bit hotter than something like a habanero. Now in my household that's not super practical because my husband doesn't love a ton of heat, and so it was not one of my most used peppers last year, and I ended up drying a lot of them and they're still in my pantry. So because they're not great for daily use for me, I'm going to still grow them this year, but I'm not going to grow as many as last year. And last year I did try to make hot sauce with them, which turned out to be a disaster, but I may try that again this year. Now you'll notice, like with these ones, a lot of my seeds come from Baker Creek. Now I've heard a lot of not super flattering things about this company in the last couple of weeks, and so I don't think I'm going to purchase from them again. I'm going to be looking more into companies like Botanical Interests and Fruition Seeds. But if you know a good seed company that has organic and heirloom seeds and especially cool peppers, let me know in the comments because I definitely want to check them out. Next up we have ahi kachucha peppers. These ones are mostly sweet but have just a little bit of heat to them as well. I did grow these last year but I wasn't super successful because A I think my soil didn't have enough nutrients in it and also I don't have a very long growing season. I'm in zone 5b so this year I started them a little bit earlier in the hopes that I'm gonna have more fruit by the end of the summer before it freezes. Now this year I expect the ahi kachucha is going to be one of my most used peppers because they're great snacking peppers. My husband and I often buy sweet snacking peppers from the store just to eat raw, to put on salads, to chop up and saute, anything like that. And these do have a little bit of heat, but I think we're going to be able to use them similarly. Now after that I have two different bell peppers which are a little bit boring. This one's a botanical interest one and this one I actually saved the seeds from bell peppers I got in my CSA box last summer. So now we're going to get to the ones that I'm really excited about because I haven't grown them at home before. I've got these lemon drop peppers, which again, these are going to be new to my garden this year. I'm hoping this one is going to be one that I use a lot because again, it isn't quite as hot as some of the other ones. They tend to be around 15,000 to 30,000 Scoville units. So again, it's a lot hotter than a jalapeno, but it's nowhere near as hot as something like a habanero. These peppers turn bright yellow just like a lemon and they're supposed to have a little bit of a citrusy taste to them. This is the next one. 
I don't know exactly how to pronounce the name, but I'm guessing it's something like biquinho. And these are Brazilian peppers. These ones aren't quite as hot. They're only about a thousand to two thousand SHU. So they're like on the milder end of how spicy a jalapeno is. I chose this one for two different reasons for my garden this year. The first being because I just moved to a new house and I'm kind of afraid that I'm not going to get enough sunlight to be really successful growing a lot of peppers. And these ones have very small fruit. And so theoretically, fruits and veggies that have much smaller fruit tend to do better when you have limited sunlight. And secondly, these ones look awesome for pickling. So I'm hoping I get tons and tons and I'm going to try pickling a lot of them, which is something that I want to learn how to do more. Then I've got the Mad Hatter pepper, which is in another silly homemade paper towel container. This is also a saved seed from my CSA box last summer. Mad Hatter peppers tend to be really on the mild side, ranging from 500 to 1000 Scoville units, so significantly milder than jalapenos. But again, they're a great snacking pepper, so you can chop it up and put it on a salad. And even if the people you're eating with don't love spicy food, it's just a little bit of heat. And then I've also got the datil pepper which are bright orange and tend to be like two to three inches long when they mature. The detail pepper I got as a free seed from Baker's Creek and it again is probably not one that I'm going to use on a daily basis or even a weekly basis. They range from about a hundred to three hundred thousand Scoville units which is in the ballpark range of a habanero. So they're pretty spicy, a little bit spicier than I would use in something like a salsa. Again with this one I might try to do a hot sauce because that's a a great way to use up a lot of peppers and I obviously am a hot sauce fan. That's all for today folks. Thank you so much for joining. Be sure to like this video to let me know that you want more content like this and let me know in the comments what peppers are you growing this year? Which ones do I need to try for next year? Now be sure to stick around for the next video. I'm going to share a review of literally one of the hottest products of the year.